Hi, thank you for joining us. And um, I'd like to introduce you to Lou Adams, who has very kindly agreed to share a little bit of her story with us today. Earlier this week, I received an email from Lou. Lou is the matron of um, an a and &E, of a major teaching hospital. And uh, she just shared with me a little bit about the situation that she uh, and her colleagues find herself in at the moment in the middle of this COVID crisis. And she asked for prayer. Actually, the other day, I know that um, I emailed you. We had, it was the, it was probably the toughest day. It was the, the real notice that things were, were changing, that we were really seeing an increase of cases. And um, I was operational that day. I was in charge and um, I walked down to the forecourt and it was it was just jam packed with ambulances. And I I thought we haven't got space. I haven't got anywhere to offload anymore. I've got I've got no idea. You know, it's not as simple as just filling up empty beds in the hospital. We're trying to uh, separate, you know, COVID patients from non COVID. We're really trying hard not to um, to treat everybody that walks in. That's the fantastic thing about the NHS. It's open to all. Uh, but we don't want to give people COVID. So that's always on our mind. So we're trying to constantly uh, look at how we are juggling beds and things like that. Uh, so actually, it's it's not as easy to move patients across the hospital. Uh, so you have a little bit of a blockage at times uh, and the volumes are greater than our capacity. So uh, I walked down and uh, spoke to some of our team and they had heads in their hands. There were tears in their eyes. And I realised it, it really hit me this is it, this this is the COVID crisis we kind of, I think, thought we would never see, hoped we would never see fully, uh, and we're in it. Um, and so I walked outside and I, I didn't know what to do, I really did not know what to do, and so I just prayed. And it was the most simple prayer ever, and it was a plea. It was just a Lord, please give us a reprieve, just a small reprieve. And I went back up to my desk, went back up to the operational meeting. You know, you have to keep powering on, coming, coming up with decisions, quick, quick um, solutions as much as you can. And I went back down to the department and the entire forecourt had cleared. There were no ambulances and no ambulances came in for nearly two, three hours. And it was divine. There, there was no doubt about it. Uh, people sat on the obstacle and just said, you know, it's a God given gift. You know, irrelevant if they're Christians or not. You know, I think it was that. It was a, a marked like, wow, there is a God in this. And although it's bleak and although it's hard, we have to believe that there is a control. And he gave us that reprieve and gave us that ability to sort out for the next wave. And that's exactly it. And it, you know, it was simple and, and no, not everyone was cured. And it doesn't stop the ambulances coming eventually. But that reprieve is what I needed to get my head back in the game, to think about the next steps and to give my staff a break. So Yes, it was God given. Absolutely. How can we pray? How can Christians pray for um, our hospitals, but also we're very aware that there will be lots and lots of healthcare workers in our churches and in our communities and our families amongst our friends, some of Christians and some are not. How can we pray for, for you and, and what should we be praying? Great. So I think um, as churches, we should be really coming together and um, absolutely praying for this situation. And um, I know I wrote a few points down, but I think um, I think one of the things is the NHS staff, you know, widely and that, you know, let's not just limit that to doctors and nurses. There is so many people giving so much time. There's porters that are putting their life on the line. There's cleaners, there's domestics. There's I mean, there's just so many staff in a hospital that you couldn't even comprehend. And each and every one of them are working their socks off. So I think praying for energy and for safety and actually peace for them as they come into work every day. And for some of them leaving their family behind, putting their kids in school when they don't want to, because we can see the reality of what this virus is doing. I think praying for the, all of the NHS staff, I think is really, really important. Uh, so that's probably one of the first things. I think praying for uh, wisdom in leadership, uh, there is no right formula. And I, I realise that in, in some of the decisions that we're having to make, uh, but praying for wisdom and praying for peace in the decisions that we're making, uh, that uh, it is the best outcome for the patients. And we get to a point that we can cope or have the right amount of capacity for the patients we're seeing. So I think that's really important. I think for the patients is, uh, is, is another thing for people, you know, we are now in a, in a position that most people will know of somebody who has had or is going through COVID, uh, whereas probably nine months ago, that wasn't such a reality uh, throughout our community. So I think praying for patients, uh, paying for their peace, paying for 
Uh, and uh, for their relatives who unfortunately aren't able to be in hospital with them. And that's really, really difficult. So for peace for them at home as well, uh, when they're just having updates through um, people like me who are phoning them and sometimes giving them some pretty terrible news. So I think that that's really important as well. And then I think to go a bit wider, let's look at how we fight this. Um, we are privileged in the UK that we've got a vaccine. Uh, so I think real prayer that this vaccine is the hope that we are looking for, that it is going to um, put an end to this eventually. And I think pray, prayer for reassurance that um, it is the right vaccine and it's going to fight all these strains that we keep hearing in the media. And then I guess finally, it's about a reprieve, an end to COVID and a new beginning. Thank you.